pleasant good day to you. And we are happy that you decided to join us today on our pastor's corner. It's a great privilege to be here with you. And we will be discussing a very interesting topic. A, a topic that is quite relevant to the time that we are living in. And it is entitled, The Bible and Current Events. There are so many things happening. And sometimes we really want to know which current event align, or current events align with the Bible. So today we'll be discussing that. I have two competent gentlemen with me. I will, I will allow them to introduce themselves shortly. But before we do so, let us pray. Father in heaven, we come before you today in the name of Jesus. We thank you, dear God, for the privilege whereby we can be present here to be aired and to discuss your word in time in light of biblical prophecy and end times. Spirit of the living God, fall upon me and the rest of the panelists, and I pray to God at the end, your name will be glorified. Others will receive insight, and at the end, your God will be drawn closer to you. We thank you for hearing and answering our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. So I told you I have two competent gentlemen with me. So to my extreme, extreme left, he will introduce himself. He will tell you his name and uh, a little about himself as it relates to his work in the Grenada Conference. Thank you very much, Mr. Moderator. Good morning, afternoon, or evening, depending on the time of day where you are. I, my name is Jerome Gordon, and I am a pastor in the Grenada Conference. I love Bible prophecy. I love end time stuff. I believe that as a church, we need to talk a lot about what is just ahead of us, because it is bad news when you think of what is coming, but it is good news when you think of who is coming. Amen, amen. 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 All right, then to my immediate left, there is another gentleman there. Um, good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Pastor Peters, Marlon Peters. I'm the pastor for the Southeastern District of Seventh-day Adventists, um, which comprises the churches of Malmont, Crowshaw, Corinth, and Westerhall. And it's a joy to be with you this morning, and I trust by God's grace that we will receive that blessing that he has in store for us. All right, so thank you again. If you are just tuning in, we want to encourage you to like, share the page, call up a friend. And once they're available, let them know that Pastor's Corner is on and we'll be discussing some relevant stuff today. All right, so our first question goes like this. It's undoubted that our world has radically changed in the last two decades. What would you say are the four most outstanding current world events with serious implication for God's people. So the question has two parts. And the second part said, and how do these things disturbing the global trend align with the biblical prophecy of perilous times shall come according to Matt, 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 1, which says, this know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. So we do the first part for us that says, um, the four most outstanding current world events with serious, serious implication for God's people, what are they? Well, I would like to begin by saying <clears throat> that we, we are seeing a lot of things happening. And there are some people, Mr. Moderator, who would say that, um, hey, don't, don't, don't worry about what's happening, man. It's going to be good. We call them the, the optimists. And then there are those who focus only on the negatives, and we call them the pessimists. But for us as Christians, we are the realists. We, we, are, we are in the middle. We don't preach just gloom and doom. Neither do we give you a fanciful, kind of whimsical notion of what's coming. We, we, we keep it real. And the reality is that they are disturbing global trends. What are some of them? Well, let's take the rise and expansion of the movement to legitimize sodomy. Okay. When I was a boy, many, many years ago, perhaps before these gentlemen, mommies met their daddies, um, when I was a boy, you would never see on television two men kissing. Hmm. And I was in the, the living room watching CNN for crying out loud. Of all the media houses, I was watching CNN and I saw them advertising an aphrodisiac. A, a, a kind of medication, Pastor Peters, that is supposed to be a turbo booster in certain departments. All right. <laughs> and they, they portrayed different um, possibilities 
two women, a man and a woman. And then the third possibility was two men. And the two men were, began to do stuff. And it was normal. No, 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 nobody crying out. And what makes it so disturbing is that we're seeing legislative support being given all almost all across the globe. And we've been told that we ought not to say anything. And I, I must say, gentlemen on the panel, that I am one of those persons who do not advocate violence against any group because That's of right. their orientation. <coughs> and I will stand with any group despite their orientation if their human rights are being violated. If you are reducing the housing benefits for a person because of his, um, his or her orientation, I'm going to stand with them because I believe in justice. However, as evangelical Protestants, it is our duty to keep our ears on the ground and to watch what's going on. As the Bible says in Ezekiel, be a watchman on the walls of Zion right. and warn the people. And I think one of the most outstanding trends that we're seeing is the emergence and expansion of sodomy being legitimized all across the globe. That's, that's so true. And, and, and Thank I know that Pastor Paul um, is the lack of love. The Bible puts it this way. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. And given the times that we are living in, we can see that there seems to be a trend of evading love. Love is lacking in our society. And because love is evading, violence seems to be rising steadily. Look at our very own little state in Grenada here. Yeah. Um, bullet wound would have been far into our ears a few years ago. True. Now it seems to be common. And what is even more frightening now, we are hearing that there are unsolved cases. Mm -hmm. Not a case, but cases. Yes. Um, the last time I checked, we had about four unsolved cases. Well, this one yesterday, I don't know, I, I don't know if we would have found the person as yet. But it speaks fear into the hearts of many. True. And it is not just Grenada. Right around the region presently now, it seems as though there is fear from Jamaica, St. Kitts, St. Vincent, Trinidad. Yeah. All of the islands around, right around us seems as though that there are fear circulated in, in, in various countries. And this speaks to the whole idea that the devil is at work. The devil is at work. And it speaks also to the reality that Jesus is about to come. Because it will wax, the Bible says, worst and, and worst. worst. Yeah. Evil men and seducers will wax worst and worst. So we know very well that these are things to come. And to me, this should raise a red flag for those of us who are preparing for the second coming of Jesus that we need now to buckle down because it is real. It is real. All right. Thank you. All right. So these are just a, a few of what's happening in the world today. And um, what has been mentioned, I believe those of you who are viewing, you see it right before your eyes. We don't, we're not, we don't have to make up stuff, you know. Um, we can see them and we'll experience them ever so often. Even when you look at the news, even right before your eyes in the community and so on, those things are happening. And, and the interesting thing about that is that, um, pastors, is that sometimes those things seem to be funny for people. That's right. You know, they saw somebody same-sex behavior, and, you know, it's like something that we should share and laugh and have fun over it. But those things are really signs that we are nearing home. That's right. All right? We that are nearing right. home. That is so true. So, um, <clears throat> go ahead. I'm sorry, Mr. Moderator. We, we said we'd highlight four, and um, Pastor touched on a very interesting one, and I mentioned Sodomy. I just want to quickly mention another two. One of the things that we're seeing now that is heartrending is the expansion of human trafficking. Mm -hmm. um, yes. It's perhaps one of the most horrendous crimes. Yeah. Traffickers exploit over 25 million people annually. That is equivalent to the population of Australia. It is a 150 billion US no, dollars industry. industry. That's right. And it is growing. Our teenagers, our children are being snatched away. They are being used as mules, as 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 prostitutes, Sexies, uh, right. and this thing is expanding. And this, to me, well, it aligns with what Pastor Peter said about the love of many waxing cold, the lack of um, natural affection, but it is something else. And the final one I want to highlight, Mr. Moderator, is the whole question of the climate change and the, the unprecedented natural disasters that we're seeing. We're seeing fires that we have never seen before. Yeah. We're seeing earthquakes, the magnitude of which, the, I mean, in terms of loss of life and damage to property, is absolutely, totally unprecedented. It is a fact that we have always had earthquakes and natural disasters, but the ones we are seeing now, in terms of magnitude and scope, they're 
absolutely unprecedented, and it points unmistakably to the fact that we are in the end of time. Amen. amen. True, so yeah. True, so true. All right? So let's move on. Um, can you draw parallels between, between the rise of false prophets in the Bible and modern religious leaders who claim to have divine insights into the future? You see, the Bible says here clearly in Matthew chapter 24 and verse 11, and many false prophets will appear and deceive many people. So can a parallel be drawn with what happened in the Bible and what we are experiencing today with some modern religious leaders? Well, if, I, if I'm going to um, start on this one, notice well, when we look at, I am one that likes to look at the, the wording of, of the text. Mm -hmm. The Bible calls them prophets, but they are false. Come on. All right. Yes, yes, yes. Which, which means that they, they will perform some things in your presence, making you believe that they are the real. Definitely. They, are, they, they, they will do wonders. Mm -hmm. um, so we have to be careful. I'm, I'm very much um, passionate about this plea because sometimes, even amongst us, we have those with itching ears. I heard our president mention it um, in recent times who, who are falling for several things. True. Um, we have to be careful with those. We are seeing um, a large number of, of prophets now I've been raised in, in African Union. Mm -hmm. um, Definitely. Touching with clothes and touching the television and you will be healed. And you are sick and you are ill from some diseases for years. And, and it's just a money-making industry now. And, and, and persons will say, no, all pastors are fake because look that which is happening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can't because do anything. Whole, that's right. The whole idea of the devil is to make that which is real look counterfeit. And to make it look counterfeit is that everyone must act real. Mm -hmm. And we have to be careful. But thank God his word will always stand forever. And so there seems to be a rise. And the Bible says in the last days there will be a rise. But what is striking, God will say, hey, come out, get up for me. I never knew you. So then you may ask me, Pastor, are you telling me that this guy is healing and, and you're telling me that this is not of God? Well, the Bible is clear. Jesus will tell some of them, I never knew you. You are healing, healing from which power, what power, where? And so we have to be careful. And it's a, it, it is on the rise now. And therefore God's people have to be even more so on the alert. Not to be bamboozed by those men that saying that they come from God. But the Bible says that we must test every spirit. And see whether, whether or not it is of God. Pastor Peters. Um, there seems to be, in, light, in line with what you just said. Yeah. There seems to be a, a desire now for the spectacular. For the phenomenal. Lord. People don't want to sit down and listen to good gospel truth, gospel preaching. They want something spectacular, something that is uh, uncanny, something out of the ordinary. And the devil will, uh, will capitalize on that. Pastor Peter said a while ago, the devil wants to make that which is true. Looks like it's a counterfeit. And I would like to add that he also wants to make that which is counterfeit. Looks like it's true. That's right. He wants to make it look like it's true. And we have to be very careful as God's people. And I want to accentuate the point Pastor Peter's made. The fact that it's a miracle doesn't mean that it is done by God. That's right. right? And that ought to be clearly understood. Revelation 16, 14 says, There are spirits of devils working miracles, miracles. going forth to the kings of the earth. So we need to understand that they are false prophets. Incidentally, gentlemen, the fact that the Bible says that they are false prophets presupposes that in the last day we'll have a true one. Or we'll have true prophets, you That's know. Right. Because you can't have a, f a counterfeit note unless there is um, a, a true one, right? So the, the, the rise of this thing is, must be taken care I mean, seriously. Um, people are taking their hard-earned money, sending it to these guys, and they own Bentleys and Maybach and private Cessna, private aircrafts. Yeah. And they're telling you that they can tell the future. Now, perhaps, gentlemen, um, chat GPT can help to tell the future too, <laughs> right? <laughs> so, so the point is, be careful. Follow the truth. And may I just say this last thing we, uh, along those lines? The Bible says that John the Baptist worked no miracles, but everything he said about Jesus was true. In the end of time, your first test must be for truth. If the miracle comes devoid of truth, you don't want it. That's so right. I want to ask, I want to ask you all um, two questions. So the first thing I want to, I want, I want, I want to ensure that you said uh, um, to get clarification. So are you saying that mir some miracles that are done are not done by God but done by the devil? That is right. That is true. That even when they say in Jesus' name. So mm -hmm. even though when they wear suit and they hold Bible in their hands, <laughs> it can still be of the devil? Of Absolutely. course. Absolutely. 
All right. Because but we notice the text that Pastor Peters so beautifully articulated. He said, Jesus will say in the last days, many will come unto me saying, Lord, Lord, have we not, not done, done these. these things in your name? So the fact that it is done in the name of Christ, the name of Christ doesn't mean that Jesus did it. Yeah, well, that's remarkable. Okay, good. Nice. And the other thing I wanted, wanted to ask, how can you figure out? Because if true um, prophets and false prophets both can do miracles, how do you draw the line to know when is a good miracle or, or a miracle from God and a miracle from the devil? Okay. Can you help differentiate that for me? Please? First of all, the Bible is clear and the Bible has um, guidelines in identifying um, a true prophet from that which is fake. I think Isaiah 820, if my memory serves me well, is one of those biblical texts okay. that, that speaks to that idea, to the law and to the testimony. If they speak not, not according to it, it's because there is no light in them. So if you have some pastor today that tells you that God's law is done away with and abolished, um, this pastor, you have to look at him very closely because if the law done away with you, you it seems to me that you are lawless. Okay. Um, just this week, Ella was discussing with an individual, um, not of this faith, and I said we were discussing the whole idea of, of sodomy, Ella, the LGBTQI queer, whatever I said. And um, I was saying, do you know it's hard for you to defend that? I was telling him that. Do you know that it's very hard for you to defend um, homosexual relation? He said, why not? I don't believe in it. I said, yeah, why? He said, why? Because you don't believe in law. He said, I, I, I believe in law. I can defend that. Oh, yeah. I, and I'm straight, straight with a big capital S. I said, but I'm not sure whether we were giving each other talk. But it seems to, seems to us, when we are going on the vein of lawlessness, Anything can, can find its way with us, True. and we can side with any group. But when we hold the law of God as a moral standard for, our right, for righteousness and right doing, then we know we stand in, a, in, in the right place. And so we are seeing relativism now taking the place of what's moral, what's right, and what's good. It's no longer what's right and what is true. It's about how you feel. How you feel? You feel to be a man today, and you're a man. You, okay, you're going in heaven still. You're going in heaven. That doesn't make any so. We have to clearly place a distinction between the true and the fake. And those of us that speaks to the idea that God's law is still in existence definitely stand on the side of righteousness. All right, thank you. I just want to share a text. Second Corinthians chapter 11, 14 and 15 says, And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. That's verse, right. Verse 15 would, 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 would send it home. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as ministers of righteousness. That's right. Whose end shall be according to their work? So Satan have ministers who will perform miracles and all those different things, right? That's right. So we but just have to be mindful of that. Pastor Gordon? Mr. Moderator, you also asked the question that, um, well, implied in your question is the fact that we really do need to distinguish between them. Yeah. And Pastor Marlon mentioned one of the criteria to the law and to the testimony if they speak not according to this word. It's because there's no light in them. No light. So Pastor... Uh, Peters, even if they drive a Mercedes <laughs> and they, they have a mega church, yeah. if they speak not according to the law and the no testament. Light. But then there's another one, Jeremiah, Jeremiah 28 and verse 9, say, it says that when the, the prophecy comes to pass, That's right. yes, I was God watching Donald Trump just before the election in, a, in, in an evangelical church, and the, the, the prophet, prophetess said, God has told me, I'm going to give the president another term. Well, when the election was over, Joe Biden was elected. <laughs> That's a big... I remember um, that. Yeah. I remember so that. It, Jeremiah says that is one of the criteria. The other one is that uh, Matthew 7, 16, the person's life, by their fruits you shall know That's them. That's right. You can't have a preacher and the preacher says, I come out, I'm gay, and he's working miracles. Yeah. By their fruits you shall know them. And last of all, First um, John 4, verse 1, it speaks about the spirit... Speaking the truth about Christ, mm -hmm. the theology must be biblically consistent. That's so when right. you put all four together, then it will constitute a solid test of whether or not what you're seeing is genuine or authentic. That's right. All right. Thank you very much. Yeah, well said. And um, I pray and hope that what has been discussed will help you to use that as a filter when you are listening to preachers and seeing miracles. Because it has been a notion sometimes... Um, I, somewhere I was, I was with some guys just witnessing and one of the guys asked me, see, you could do miracles because I understand them Adventists and them can do miracles and all you're in true. Because what is expected from people is miracles. And that's why they even tell Jesus, Jesus, do some miracles, man. Jesus said, even though I do miracles before you, still don't believe. 
And we live in a world today where people like things instantly. So you have a, a foot hurting or a head, your head hurting or you have some back pain. And you just go, go to somebody and you just, they touch you, you get better. That person is true. But the devil, he is using those things to deceive a lot of people. And to keep, you, to keep you in darkness because the person who touched you have healed you. So that person is true. God sent them because the problem that I had, they solved the problem. But our standard should be the word of God. The word of God should be guiding you all the time when you are evaluating, accepting, rejecting a messenger uh, from the Lord. All right? Amen. But, but Mr. Moderator, mm -hmm. you Go ahead. mentioned something that just um, triggered a thought in my head. I have also heard that Adventists don't work miracles. And have mercy. That's not true. <laughs> I have seen God at work in the Adventist church. I have seen miracles. We have a, for example, Pastor Lambert, we have a prayer room in Lansapine. Upstairs, the Kangaroo Apartments. I can speak clearly because we do a lot of praying up there. Sister Rita Dabrio, God bless her. And one woman, she had cancer. I said, had I use the past tense. Yeah. And she came there and we prayed for her. We don't have the power to heal, but God does. That's right. And right. Mr. Moderator, she had made contact with a, with a hospital in New York City. And when she got there, all her documents, her diagnostic evaluations showed that she had cancer. When they tested her, they said, where is the cancer? Your documents say that you have it. But where is it? So I just want them to accentuate the fact that God works miracles that is right. in the Adventist church. But for us, we believe that miracles must be intimately, inextricably connected with truth. Because you can get miracles with no truth. But for John the Baptist, for Jesus, for us, miracles and truth must be in the same bed. That's right. I, I like to put it this way. Healing and obedience Amen. must link hand in hand. Amen. Okay, nice. Thank you. Right. So can you discuss the potential rise? <laughs> you see, we live in a world today where everybody is about technology. You know, sometimes you just take time to just reflect on where we are now. Um, uh, if some of our great grandparents will come back and, and see this world today, they will be amazed. Because sometimes people travel and when they come back and they see concrete road where you had donkey tracks or trail, they are amazed. Just imagine you can, when they return or if they return, they will see you using a phone and connecting with somebody and there is no line attached to it, right? You can see the person real time as you talk to them. Those things, sometimes we take them for granted, but those things are some real advancement. So my question is, can you discuss the potential role of emerging technologies in fulfilling biblical prof prophecies and how some of it can aid in the spread of the gospel to all nations as mentioned in Matthew 24 and verse 14, which says, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations, and then shall the end come. Pastor Peters. Yeah, Ella, if, I, if I'm going to mention on the emerging um, technologies, first of all, I think as God's people, we have to be um, very sensible enough to see the direction of the world. Presently now, we are seeing that banks is trying to remove us from coming inside. As much as possible, they are saying, go online. Um, I think it was last year, year before, just before election there, the, the voucher that was given to persons for school uniform, it was given with a code. Wow. It was not checks to go to the Indian stores. They had a special device there. They scanned the code, and you had $150 credit, and your credit will go. You can take uniform. Right in Grenada here, I'm not speaking about Japan. So this should help us to understand the direction of the world because it, it links nicely with Revelation that, that in acceptance of the mark of the beast, God, those of us um, as God's people, will not be able to buy, neither sell. And to do that, there must be a medium to control spending or buying. Ella, you can't control an individual from putting a $5 in a cash pan. No. You cannot control that. But you can control it if we are going on online, you know, on a device, cashless society. And that's the point. That's the direction the entire world is going, to be cashless society. Should we be fearful Fearful of what? God is our sustainer, our bread, and our water will be sure. That is correct. But in relation to emerging technologies, we see the internet that is causing the church, causing many to be added to the church by just um, clicking a link and listening to Pastor God and praise here or to do a, a service here. Zoom. Zoom helped us through COVID tremendously. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And I think oh, yes. that, oh, yes. I, I, I believe, I, I always say that Zoom got orchestrated 
um, that Zoom platform to save some of us mm -hmm. because some of us would have been dying from lack of church. Yeah. You know, I think that was the worst period of my life. I don't even want to speak about it, but just to sit home on a couch and, and by the time the song service is done, you're sleeping. I don't like that service at all. But I think Zoom helped us to connect even in the, in the midst, in, in spite of COVID. So the technologies, though they have their ills, and they do have the ills. We've seen Surface in our chat GPT. We'll learn more about that next week because we have an entire program on, on AI next week. But we are seeing the emergence of those stuff. But the internet helps spread the, go the gospel as much as there are a lot of negativities as well that the devil is walking with oh, yes. and walking through. And therefore, we need the spirit of God even more so in our day than before in the management of these emerging technologies. Even the same device that we all of most of us have this cell phone is taking away a lot of Jesus from us. Come on. I mean, that, that might be strong language, but we spend more time um, dribbling through our phones and, and texting our phones than we spend in the word of God or even in the things of God or worship. So these are things that we need to be very mindful of, even though it's emerging technologies, we have to be mindful. And, and before Pastor Gordon go, you know, as you, as you mentioned the cell phone, you know, the, the, the world is really coming up to speed with technology because before you go and you're watching a video on YouTube and you find it's too long, so they realize they, they want to keep you, so they, 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 they introduce shots. That's right. So you don't have to watch it for long, but the, the way they are coming, they are coming rapidly. Because when you, when you open your homepage on YouTube now, first thing is a set of shots. Yes. So you don't have to watch your long videos, and you just keep watching shots and shots and shots. So watch, when you won't sit down and watch something for 15 minutes, you will watch shots for 30 minutes and not realize that you watch about 15 shots in 30 minutes. Amen. Because they keep coming quickly, right? Pastor Gordon, go ahead. Yes, um, the, the fact is that the emerging technologies help in fulfilling Bible prophecy in many ways, <coughs> many, many ways. For example, the Bible talks about the, the progressive depravity of man. And now you don't have to go to a late night theater to watch pornography. It's on your phone. It's, it's, it's everywhere. It's ubiquitous because of the aid of technology, right? We're seeing young people now are being programmed to violence. The game, the, the pop G and the other games where our young people spend hours before the devices and they're learning to do violent things. Tom and Jerry, that's kids play now. I mean, they're far more violent cartoons. They're cartoons with witchcraft where the kids have been told how they can make um, potions and create spells. So the emerging technologies are fulfilling the prophecies in another way in that it's helping to deprave man That's right. and to distort our young people. And also, I must say, 5G, everything is smart. I met a guy in the bank recently in Grenada, and he could stay in the bank and water his lawn in, in Boston. Water his lawn, you know. He, he, his refrigerator through 5G tells him, helps him to make up his shopping list and tells him how many eggs um, he could probably replace. The washing machine is smart. Every gadget now smart. is coming out smart. Smart, smart. And so you can control them. What is that doing for us? Mr. Moderator, among the things, and I must say it, and I know some will disagree with me, but it's the truth. There are some young ladies now who are lazy. They don't know how to wash. They don't know how to make a home because everything now, there is a gadget to wash, the, to wash the dishes, to do everything, even to cook for you. So the young, young ladies are getting married today and they, they can't do anything for their husbands, perhaps except one thing. But the point is, we must see that the emerging technologies have a downside. 5G, I will close with that one. When they first started testing 5G, we saw certain plants beside the antennas, and these plants were being destroyed because of the ionizing radiation coming from 5G. So, beloved, we are seeing that the emerging technologies in one way, Pastor um, Paul said, helps with the furtherance of the gospel, and that's true. But in another way, when you flip the coin over, it is being used by the devil as well. All right, thank you very much. Right, so we get the whole insight in how we can use technology to advance the gospel, and we can use presently, you are, you are looking at us wherever you are. That's technology advancing the gospel. And if you share the link and you have a family member or a friend outside of Grenada, they can still view because there are others who are viewing outside of Grenada, even outside of the Caribbean, they can view us where we are sitting right here in Grenada. So let us use the technology to advance the gospel and to reach individuals 
where they are. At this point in time, we'll have a we'll take a break as we have a special music um, from Sister Camilla since here. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. We thank Sister Sincere for blessing the Lord today. 
with our wonderful voice. You see, when God has gifted you, we need to use our gift to bring honor and glory to his name and also to be a blessing to an individual who may be going through a difficult time. The words of the song can be a means of motivation, of strengthening, and also a means of hope to the individuals who are listening. So continue, continue to use your talents and your gifts to bring honor and glory to God. All right. So we continue today. We are speaking about um, end time events. And we pray and hope that those of you who recently joined, you have been blessed. And as we continue, I have um, two distinguished gentlemen with me, Pastor Jerome Gordon and Pastor Marlon Peters, as we continue um, with our discussion. We continue. There are many Christians who claim that we should not waste time listening to the news of this sinful world. Is their position biblical in light of the following passages? Because there are some passages that when you look at them, they will bring to your, to your attention how important it is to listen or not to listen to the news, right? And we'll read one from Romans chapter 13. Romans chapter 13, and reading from verse 11. And it's an interesting text that says, And that knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than we believe, than when we believe. The night is fast spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk earnestly as in the day, not in rioting or drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envy. Right? So this is just one of the scripture. We, we won't go through all of it. But um, is, the, is the, the idea of not looking at news in the sinful world, of, of what happened in the sinful world, is it biblical, pastors? I, I like, if I want to start with that, and I, I'm going to state here that as God's people, we have to be very wise. Um, Jesus asked us, Pastor Lambert and Pastor Garden, that we must watch and pray. Mm -hmm. He told them to watch and pray, meaning to pay close attention and to avoid disaster. And I look at the verb tense here, Pastor Garden. It says to watch and pray means that this is an ongoing command. So it's not something that we do and we stop. It must be ongoing until Jesus himself comes. All right. um, my computer home, Pastor Lambert, have most, mostly all the headings is news broadcast around the world, from mm -hmm. Al Jazeera to CNN to Fox. I, I do that religiously every day because I want to see what is happening around the world. And as children of God, we have to be on the alert. I mean, I, we don't get involved in conspiracy theories and, and sharing things which is fake, but you must be abreast. So you do your, 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 your pull your compilation of your news and you see which one, which is authentic because if this one is giving you the same news this and this, then you know you are in safe hands. And especially the times in which we are living in where there seems to be a lot of counterfeit. Mm -hmm. Somebody can put up, did you see Pastor Gordon in a meeting with the Jesuits? Mm -hmm. I've seen person send me that message already telling me that they see a pastor in our conference um, in, a, in, a, in a group with the Jesuits and I had to ask them, where, where do you get this, get this yeah. nonsense? We have to watch and pray and compare with scripture. The scripture must be the basis and foundation for truth and its establishment. True. And therefore, we can't mix that at all. But as children of God, you must pay keen and close attention to that which is happening around you and around the world. And by doing so, you will be able to see clearly where we are as it relates to the second coming of Jesus in Earth's history. I totally agree, Mr. Moderator, with um, Pastor Peter's um, little discourse a while ago. There, there are Christians who actually have told me that. Why, why should you watch the news? Now, of course, there are people who watch too much news. <laughs> Even right. on a Friday evening yeah. when they should be relaxing with the family, they're on CNN. You know, no, you can't be, you know, balance is an interesting concept. That's right. Uh, it permeates God's creation. In physics, we call it equilibrium. In music, we call it harmony. In biology, we call it homeostasis. Balance. You, you can't be too much involved in the news, but at the same time, you'd be really off if you are, if you are turning your back on what's happening. True. How do you know when prophecies are being fulfilled if, That's right. if you are not conversant with what's happening? And I like the other text, Pastor Lambert, um, 1 Chronicles 12, 13. It says, and the children of Issachar, which were men that had understanding of the That's times right. to know what Israel ought to do. Yeah. Definitely. We need to be like the sons of Issachar. We need to understand the times. We need to know what's going on around us. Is it true that there are COVID virus, I mean, variants of Omicron 
that are creating greater hospitalizations now than, than last year? What's going on? I am saying, Pastor, Mr. Moderator, we ought to be conversant with what's going on in our world. That's right. All right, thank you. As we move on, can you describe for us the connection, if any, between the coming of Christ and world events with scripture reference that I will make mention of? All right, Matthew 24, 6, 21, and 32. Matthew 24, chapter 6 says, And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that he be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. 21 says, For then shall be great, for then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, not ever shall be. And verse 32 says, Now learn a parable of the fig tree. When his branch is yet tender and put forth leaf, he know that summer. Is nigh. So is there a connection there? Well, you know, um, Jesus Christ in leaving the earth, Pastor Peters, he did not give us a date when he was coming back. That's he could right. have said, I'm coming back on the 10th of October, 2023. He could have given us a date. That's but, right. you know, he, he knows us that we are how crafty we can be. There's a term I learned since I came there, Ratchifi. I hope that's a good <laughs> word. <laughs> he knows yeah. us too much. So rather than giving us a date, because if he said he was going to come on the 10th of October, people would party and give everything. Yeah. And on the 9th, That's all right. the churches would be packed. You can't fool Jesus, man. Come on. So he didn't give a date. Rather, he gives signs. And he says, look for these things. And when you see these things, these things have persuasive power. They will tell you. It's like when I was a boy, there was a train in Jamaica, a big rumbling monster, not this sophisticating gliding trains of Europe that go on magnetic power. No, no, no. The real monster. And when it's coming, Pastor Lambert, you could feel the vibration. You could hear it. That's it. Jesus says, when you hear the sound, when you feel the vibrations, then you ought to know. So the question is, what is the connection between the world events and the coming of Christ? It tells us when it is near. We don't know the exact date, but we must know when it is near based on the world events. Yeah, so basically as you're speaking about the world events, you know, there are many hot spots around the world. That's right. Because the world events is things that are happening in the world. And one of the things that are happening now is the war between um, Ukraine and Russia. In what ways do these events affect the lives and livelihood of the rest of the world with implication for our stewardship and evangelism? How does that affect us? And, and that is so true, um, Pastor Paul. Just last month, I think Putin would have met with the um, African Union discussing the whole issue of the shipment of grain because presently in Ukraine, um, grain cannot be shipped because of, of the Black Sea deal between Russia and Ukraine. And the African Union now is worried that grain will not um, be shipped to them. In case we do not know, um, grain is a very vital um, food for the entire world. And Ukraine, I think, um, statistics shows, are responsible for by 40 something, over 40% of the grain that supplies to the world. So it's a, it's a lot of grain um, that we are talking about here. And presently, we can see the effects of such in our supermarkets. You go with $100 now and you don't have meal for a week. Um, we, are, we are in trouble. And because of, of that, the inse insecurity of our economic insecurity, Persons are saying, no, I have to hold back that which belongs to, the God, to God for rainy days. So then we have um, um, spiritualities and a decline in the church because persons stop being faithful to God. They believe that the hardship is causing them to hold back that which belongs to, the God, to God. And these are signs that we need to look out for. Um, we know that there will be wars and, and rumors of wars in the last days. This is a clear example of, of biblical prophecy before our eyes. What should we do? Should we hold for rainy days? Then if we are holding for rainy days, who really and truly supplies Come on. our needs? Isn't it not the same God who, who steers us into this path will supply our needs? But, but uh, Pastor Peter is just interjecting here. Yes. It's the same God who said that our bread and water will be sure. That's the point where you're getting it. Yes, yes. So because if you secure your bread and water, no, that means you don't need God to secure your bread and water. That is the point. Come. That is the point. If you try to secure your bread and your water for yourself, it simply means that when it's finished, you have to supply yourself. Of course. But then if we ask God to supply it for us, God, so, uh, he always has sufficient for us to supply until. Um, it's not just where 
It's not like Ukraine and, and Russia where um, ammunition is, is running low and running low. God's supplies cannot run low. True. And for the sake of evangelism, it has evangelistic impact. If you look at World War I, World War II, after those world wars, we see the gospel penetrating in regions where it never went before. Mm -hmm. So don't just look at war as something as killing people. I, I don't believe we don't support wars. But what, 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 what happens after wars? The gospel penetrating and opening doors that it has never went before. So let us pray for the people in bo on both sides. But as members, I'm appealing to you, don't hold back on God. Trust God to the end that he is the one that will supply your needs according to your riches and glory. Amen. Pastor Gordon? Absolutely. Um, it's an inspiration listening to these men um, talk because <coughs> what they're saying is so encouraging. And I just want to add a little bit to what they have already so beautifully said. We, one of the phenomena that we have seen coming from the wars is um, inflation, a rise right. in inflation across Latin America and the Caribbean. We have seen inflation uh, moving up to 11% and even up to 16%, well high in double yes. digits. Now, we understand that when inflation rises, it means the spending power of your dollar decreases. So if you had $100 in the bank in January, even though you may still have that same 100 in December, what it can buy in December will be far less than yes. what it could buy in January That's so because true. inflation would have eaten out the spending power. And since the war has begun in Ukraine, inflation has been spiraling. The implications are, are serious. The pastors a while ago just itemized some of the implications. We need to understand, beloved, that these are times when we must buckle down with Jesus. We must be closer to him because tougher days are coming, but we know that God is going to Amen. make a way. Amen. And they mentioned also evangelism. One of the things, pastors, Peters, and Paul, that we have to highlight is the fact that during these times, people experience a lot of distress, a lot of feelings of hopelessness. hopelessness. That's right. And so it is an opportune time to share our faith and our faith with them. Amen. 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 All Wonderful. right. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, so we're we touching a little again on technology because, you know, that's the time we are living and you can't run from it. So he said, with increasing technology advancement and civilian system, how might Revelation 13, 16 to 17, be relevant in today's context of privacy concerns? We're talking end time events, right? And we like this, this smart stuff. So here's what the Bible says. It also forced all people, great and small, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hands or their foreheads, so that they could not buy or sell unless they had the mark, which is the name of the beast or the number of its name. So how do technology in terms of technology advancement and, um, and, and the spine programs, I'll, I'll, I'll simplify it, um, system, how might that affect our, our lives today in terms of privacy concerns? Allah, that's a that's a very that's a big one. Um, spying is a big thing right now. Mm -hmm. um, can we really and truly hide? It, we can't in these modern times. We have um, GPS devices. You cannot run from a satellite. What is amazed me? Uh, what has amazed me as an individual is to understand the world spin and its access. I think Pastor Garden have the the proper term for these things so so quickly, and yet for all. A GPS can pinpoint your location at any particular time, um, wherever you are. You can be in among those of us who believe that we can escape the rat by running into the mountain. You have to think twice because presently, as I'm speaking to you, modern technology has gone so far that the, the big nations like U.S., Russia, um, China, they have ICBMs, intercontinental ballistic missiles. They can stay where they are, and they can pinpoint Grenada Conference of Seventh-day Adventist head office presently. And they can send a missile to this building alone. Mm -hmm. They have those that they call tactical, mm -hmm. which based on the scope of mask or whatever. It speaks to the idea as to where can we really actually run to? My beloved, the only place that we can run to is in the arms of God. Oh, yes. And, oh, yes. oh, and it yes. speaks to the idea of the, the mark of the beast. It is coming. We, we would not be able to run, but we have power that will be able to shut down those satellites so GPS can't work. Come on, preacher. Because GPS runs by satellite. And God has the right software where you can shut down satellite system in space so that it would not be able to track God's people. Mm -hmm. Hence the reason why the Bible says that our bread and our water will show. God is in, in short saying, you don't worry. Mm -hmm. That's not for you to understand how you will make it. You just need to trust me 
and I will ensure that it happens for you. So as God's people in these last days, we know that the mark of the beast is an enforcement um, to keep a, a, a Sunday as a sacred. That is non-biblical, and as God's people, we cannot stand for it and with it. And because of such, we will be hunted. We will be ridiculed. We will be, we, we will be cast aside, cast, yeah. cascaded. But as God's people, we must stand for righteousness, as the servant of the Lord says, even though the heavens fall. Amen. Thank you very much. Beautiful. Pastor God. Beautiful. Now, I notice, uh, Mr. Moderator, that the, the question speaks about surveillance systems. It must be understood that one of the features of our generation of the end time will be the, re the erosion of religious liberty, religious freedom, right. and the emergence of greater state control. Right. So now farmers are crying out because even certain seeds are being regulated and you're planting periods. <laughs> and it, 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 is, it is expanding. Your privacy is being um, taken away. That's right. All kinds of gadgets. By the way, um, Pastor Paul and Pastor Peters, do you notice that in Grenada now, at all the intersections, there are cameras? Yeah, but and they're not activated yet. And not, not, but <laughs> they, they are installed, <laughs> right? The point is they are installed, and they are going to enable the authorities to see 24-7. And, and one particular brand of them is 360. You know, yeah, and yeah, they have yeah, cameras yeah. too, yeah. which means that there will be greater surveillance. It's okay. I used to be in a, in, in a large police department, uh, um, so I understand law enforcement and, and the benefits of having surveillance. Uh, that, so on the one hand, that's awesome. But the big picture is that our privacy that's and right. our freedom will be compromised by the system. That's right. Earlier, Pastor Peters mentioned not being able to hide, and he mentions the certain types of missiles. But even going there in a rock, Pastor Lambert, the infrared sensors on a passing drone can pick up the temperature yeah, differential right. between yes, your right. body mm -hmm. and the rock. That's right. Know yeah. that you're hiding behind you're your rock, you know? So th the, the truth is that we cannot run, we cannot hide except in, in Jesus. And we understand, folks, and this is very serious, <laughs> that as we see our freedoms being eroded, we must push back. Some people say, because it is inevitable, we must just roll over and die and wait until it is here. No, no. we must push back. We must That's fight right. back. That is right. We must say like Claude McKay, like men, we will face the murderous, cowardly pack with our backs pressed to the wall, dying, but always fighting back. In other words, do what we can. Advocate for religious freedom. That is right. Advocate for the sanctity of our privacy. Let our voices be heard like watchmen on the walls of Zion. I, I, I saw something interesting there. Sister Avian is saying, my television tells me my name and where I live. Yes. <laughs> Once you have a Google account or yes, yes, account, yes. your information is no longer private in Ella. No. Well, I saw something on my phone recently, <laughs> gentlemen, and for the viewing audience. On my cell phone, a message came up. These are all the airports you have been to, you have traveled from in the last seven years. I did not ever tell Google where I was going. That is true. And all the airports I've traveled in the last seven years came up on my screen telling me I was there. That's yeah. right. But you see, that's, that's really interesting. I remember there is something circulating on WhatsApp where a man called um, a food place. I, I can't remember. Oh, yes. To order it. an item. And when he called to order pizza, I think he said, well, you shouldn't be eating pizza. And he said, why you shouldn't be eating pizza? Because you check the doctor so, so, so time. And the doctor said that you have high cholesterol and this and that. And you're taking that medication. So, like, everything was just, like, connected. And, and your household, you know, you should order the pizza for that person in your household because that person eat it and not you. And, you know, it's like, because you see, you think about it, eh? and, and, and this just spoke for you to see one time. When it comes to statistics for church um, records and so, we, we find all kind of problem to give you your name and your date of birth and, and, and different things like that. But all your information is already all over the internet. It's already there. Because when you want to sign up for something, it doesn't matter what, you just put information. But their place of birth, your, whosoever, yeah. uh, all those different things, sometimes even your security, when they ask you for your mother and uh, maiden name, you just put a name and like, well, how do they know that? But you put it, we put it there. Right? So we got to be careful because once it's there, it cannot be re removed or erased. Somebody could deactivate your account, but that's already there in the system, right? That is true. That's so right. let me just be mindful of that. As we get ready to wrap up, um, what insight can we gain from the biblical account of the Tower of Babel in Genesis 11, 1 to 9, in understanding modern global communication and united effort? Right? And we know all that transpire 
and the um in the tower of Babel, but I yeah. just read a verse. He said, Come, let us build ourselves a city with a tower that reaches to heaven, so that we may make a name for ourselves. You know, I I I sat here, I think well, probably a few months ago, and I would have mentioned something on this on this very text. Um, when you look at modern marvels in the with the construction of, of some buildings, it would have been impossible for those persons in the time of, of Babel, Babel, Babylon to construct a tower to reach to heaven. Even today, it, it, it is not, it, it's just not lo logical to build a tower to reach to heaven. So when you look at this text, we have to read that text very deep to see what, why did God get angry with them. And as God's people, I think we have to be mindful of the very fact. God calls us to unite. But yes. uniting to do the wrong thing is terrible. Mm -hmm. They wanted to unite to do that which is wrong. God had to scatter them. God knew very well. They could not have even built, probably in those days, I don't know if they had the mechanism that we have today, like the steel and, 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 to, and the glass. No, they, didn't. No, they, didn't. they did they not. Didn't. They had probably they had technology. Yeah, but not, not but to go so far mm -hmm. um, to build a building to reach the skyscraper that they are talking about here. Even, you know, modern times we can't do it. By the time we reach a certain amount of feet, then we realize that we, the pressure alone up there will, will kill every person that reach up up there. But we must not unite with any force that is to bring something that which is negative. So we are seeing, for example, Solomon and the rise as pastors speak about. The church can unite with that. But the church has to speak that which God says. And that is, it is non-biblical and we will stand by scripture. We cannot unite with things that God would have condemned. We just can't. And hence the reason why as Seventh-day Adventists, as, as members as well as, as leaders, we must stand with the gospel at all times. And therefore, Babel taught me, teach me, even presently now he's teaching me, that even if I have to unite, it must be for the sake of the gospel and that which is right. Thank you. Pastor Gordon? Absolutely. Um, I so much agree with um, <laughs> Pastor Peters that we must learn some lessons from the Tower of Babel. There are some concepts that were in operation there that were believed that we are seeing today. Uh, we are seeing, for example, a kind of unity against um, minorities. Right. In other words, what people will come together and they will, they will have a narrative that excludes certain non-conforming minorities. So if you think one way and the popular narrative speaks one way, you are supposed to conform or be prosecuted. And we've seen that coming out of the Tower of Babel. They say, come on, let's get together. But the coming together was in an unbiblical... That's right. I mean, it was coming together unbiblically. The agenda was unbiblical. That's right. And we're going to see that today. And we've got to be careful that even if you have to stand alone, don't follow the... U the it's unity, but it's false unity for a diabolical purpose. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. As we conclude our final question for today, in a way, the disturbing social trends and serious world events can be spiritually comforting. In what way can we take comfort in the re reliability of the word of God and the certainty of the better life to come as we see these things unfolding? So how can that be a blessing to us? And this will be your closing comments as well. well if I'm going to start here... Um I take comfort in the word of God irrespective of that which is happening around us. First of all, I think we quoted it for, for the entire session that God would have made it clear that even during this time, Michael shall stand up and our bread and our water will be Amen. shown. And because Michael shall stand up for us, we are in safe hands. Amen. Because Russia may have ICBMs, but Michael controls the remote Come for the on. ICBMs. Oh, yes, oh, yes. Because Michael simply means warlord. He knows how to fight. He knows how to save his people. That's right. And therefore, the people of God must unite in the effort to see Jesus when he comes. Amen. We have one mandate that is given from heaven, that we must preach the everlasting gospel to all the world. And finally, Pastor Paul, you know, I'm learning from the war in, from Russia and Ukraine. When Ukraine recovers some territory, they consolidate that territory in which they would have reclaimed. In other words, they want to ensure that Russia doesn't come back and occupy that land. When we give our hearts to Jesus, the church consolidates, but we must continue to march to win more territory for Jesus. Thank you very and much. And therefore, we have to preach the everlasting gospel until Jesus comes. Thank beautiful. you very much. Pastor, Absolutely Pastor beautiful. Gordon, and I'll up. make my, my less than 30 second comment by saying, indeed, the, the, the evidences, the, the, the world events, really speak to the reliability of the scriptures. 
that were written thousands of years ago, yet they speak with unerring exactitude That's right. to the very <laughs> ultimate of mathematical precision. The Bible is the word of God, and it is our chart and compass and guide. And even though we see what's coming, we can be comforted that God foresaw it and has warned us, and he's going to take care of us. Amen. Thank you very much. So for those of you who have been viewing, want to encourage you, you can share the link with somebody because tonight there will be a rebroadcast at 8 p.m. So as we conclude, let us pray. Father in heaven, we give you thanks and praise for your love and your mercy. We thank you, dear God, for your word that guides us to inform us and to give, be as a compass to let us know where we, where we are heading. I pray to God that we will not ignore the signs, but we will pay attention to it. So when you come, we can see you face to face. We thank you for hearing, and we thank you for answering our prayer. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And amen. amen. God bless you. Thank you.